Would you stand for us? Hallelujah. Let's give our graduates a hand of love this morning. How many of you remember the day you graduated? Only two of you. The rest of you didn't graduate. Well, maybe one day. Isn't it, aren't we blessed to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. If you're blessed to be in the house of the Lord, let me hear you say amen. amen. You know I like to get things started off fast. So let's put our hands together for the Lord again. Yeah. 
I think so hard I had to got the things juices flowing. Hallelujah. <laughs> so good to see you this morning. Great to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Yes, amen. Thank you, Jesus. God has blessed us with a wonderful day, a day that uh, we celebrate Memorial Day, and uh, we know what how uh, what an awesome thing it is to stand, be able to stand here because of the many who fought for the freedom that we have that we can come into church and worship here this morning. Hallelujah. <laughs> God said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. When you're going through the night in your life, and I, I'm referring to night as uh, the bad times, the evil times, depression, and family problems, and Lord knows what our country has just gone through with these children. But when we're going through those times, God has hadn't left us. He will not forsake us. 
He holds us tighter than we've ever been held before. Yes. And I pray, yes. we've been praying for that community. Can we sing that when the night is holding on again? When the night is holding on to me, God is holding on. Sing it again, that's beautiful. When the night is holding on to me, God is holding He'll never leave you when the night God this morning. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and tell him you're glad to see him this morning. Amen. Good to see you. Hallelujah. I think y'all do that all day, wouldn't you? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm so glad Brother Eric's here with us this morning, uh, helping out. Uh, Brother Joe is having some problems with his legs, so uh, I thank God for him this morning. Thank God for you. Thank you for being here with us this morning. Every chain. 
what it is no matter what you're facing in life God can take care of it like I said he'll never leave us he'll never forsake us he's always there a lot of times we don't understand but he can give us peace and he can give us understanding can he? thought about doing this song I couldn't help but think about what went on in Texas and every one of us know and uh, Forrest shared a, a beautiful uh, I think the guy's name was Donovan and may, you may have seen it on Facebook it, it was uh, talking about like twas the night before Christmas but it was talking about these children and we could we read it while we were practicing we couldn't get through it but um the very instant that those children went through this, um, I know that they met God face to face. Amen. And yes. they had no recollection of what happened. No. They came to a place that was peaceful, that was comfort, and that they were in a place that wasn't strange to them. Amen. They were home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the loving arms of Jesus. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we... we, we that's the only comfort we can draw, and I pray. You know, they talk about we got to control this and control that. We need God control in America. That's right. That's what we need, God control back in America. Hallelujah. That's right. I won't get, I'm not supposed to preach. 
Hallelujah. I'm a traveler far from home I get lost but I press on cause there's a mansion with streets of gold where I belong Yes, there's a day coming soon where the old will be made new and heaven's glory it shines like the morning before our eyes. Mm. When we all see Jesus, when we all see Jesus, no more sickness and no more madness and no more pain. to face Then we will sing with angels voices There will be a great rejoicing Holy, holy and worthy the land oh, when we all see Jesus when we all see Jesus no more sickness and no more madness more pain oh, when we all see Jesus face to face oh, when we all see my Jesus when we with you. We'll be praying for the graduates in just a few moments, but want to take a, a few moments and definitely remember uh, those families in Texas, which I'm sure is spread out around uh, their families from all over. I want to continue to pray for them. As uh, it's already been mentioned, uh, Joe Gibson is 
been taken to the emergency room, uh, some cellulitis, and it's been very, very painful for him. Some of you have dealt with that. Uh, I believe it was cellulitis, is that correct? Yes. So uh, we pray for him. We lift him up and uh, pray for a speedy recovery. Uh, I did hear from Rodney, and he shared about uh, Tracy Huff Settler. Many have asked. Uh, I believe that they're saying he's cancer-free, but he's got to do some treatments for a while. It'll be like six months, um, you know, process. Uh, so we lift up Tracy. I also want to continue to pray for Darlene Cope. Uh, Miss Janet Harris and her daughters that have been sick as well with COVID. Um, Margaret Lingerfeld, we want to continue to pray for her. Um, Barry Spencer is not able to be here with us today. This is our first Veterans and Memorial, well, Memorial Day and Veterans Day. He's going to be back with us, I believe, uh, but Memorial Day that he's missed with us, and uh, so we lift him up today. Also, uh, LaVon was letting me know before service that her aunt, or Daryl's aunt, Sue Strickland, fell. Uh, so I want to pray for her, and then uh, Gary was sharing. I mean, yeah, Gary was sharing to pray for uh, Sandra. So we lift her up as well. And then uh, Rondo was letting me know that uh, Connie's surgery was a success this week, but she has a decision to make: either um, something pretty significant for 30 days or five years of taking a pill just to, so they can make sure that she's cancer free from that so that God would give her wisdom and peace in her heart that she needs to have and uh, she'll move forward with that so other prayer needs and Randy we lift up your back my brother and you'll be well and whole and uh, we thank you for that other prayer needs yes it's this coming Wednesday okay all right all right Tina we lift you Amber Okay. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Sure. Sure, sure especially testing and all that kind of stuff and finishing up, graduations and stuff. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. With Gaston County. Right. Yes. Yeah. We just pray for peace for the families of sending your kids into the school. I, I, my parents never even thought of anything like that when I was going to school. I'm just telling you. Amen. Yes. Uh, the school this morning before board really laid on my heart to uh, speak about something that I had been praying for. Um, it's about the hurricane in Baker and where they go to Africa. And um, I feel like the Lord just said, remind the school leaders to pray for the boat in Africa. Sure. Amen. Take every opportunity you got. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come to you, and, and Lord, we are broken inside for these families. We know that those children uh, that have passed on, Lord, um, I think selfishly, and for whatever reason, we know that there's evil in this world and there's sin in the world. But Lord, we thank you for receiving them. And I thank you for giving peace and comfort to those families, not only there, but around the world, Lord, that deal with uh, tragic situations. Um, but Lord, we lift up those that uh, are, are not well with us today, that, that are uh, facing surgeries or have received surgeries and trying to determine what's the best treatment. Those that are receiving transfusions and all these kinds of things, those with hurt backs and um, just... Our, our life, Lord, needs you to work through it. And we just give you opportunity. We give you free reign to, to deal with anything that we've got in our lives, Lord. We thank you that you are a healing God, that you sent your son, that he would die, not only for the forgiveness of our sins, but the healing of our bodies. And we thank you that we can receive that today. We ask, Lord, that you'd be with those that are traveling this week. We thank you for the families that... 
um, are represented here that uh, have had uh, maybe dads or moms or uncles, uh, different ones that have uh, fought in different wars or served and uh, have been faithful to this country that we would have the freedoms that we have today. Lord, we don't want to take it lightly for those that would lay their lives down for others, and we thank you for that today. God, we ask that your anointing and that your Holy Spirit would guide and direct our time that we have. And we will give you the praise, we'll give you the honor and the glory. It's in Christ's name we pray. And everybody said, amen. You may be seated here this morning. My lovely wife, Delaine, is going to come up and help us out. And got two special guests. We're on the yellow one, Mike. I'll take those. Yes. Malaya and Blair. How many of you think I'll forget that before it's over with? If you get the wrong one, switch Just swap, later. Swap from you. You'll figure it out. We have the privilege of honoring our graduates this morning. So we will get started. First of all, we have Malaya Day. She's the daughter of I Justin and Amber, Amber Day. I don't know. Would the parents stand up would you mind standing up real quick let us just give you a hand <laughs> <laughs> thank you she is graduating next weekend from Stuart Kramer High School where she was the captain of the volleyball team and she will be graduating with honors Malaya will be attending the University of North Carolina Wilmington in the fall she plans on majoring in marine biology while completing a pre-veterinarian track with hopes to attend veter veterinarian school after Wilmington. All right. Thank you, Malala. <laughs> Congratulations to you and your church family will be praying for you through this next season. And I want you to remember our graduates. Um, and we look forward to seeing you anytime you come home. Okay. And we've, <laughs> and we've got three dogs, so hurry up. Yeah. Three dogs. <laughs> Our next uh, graduate is Blair Lowry. Mm. She's the daughter of Danny and Melanie Lowry. Would you stand, please? Let's give you a hand. She has already graduated, and she graduated from Belmont Abbey with a major in sports management and minor in business. All right. Congratulations, Blair. All right. Now we have just a few more that were not able to be here this morning, but we wanted to honor them and recognize them. Um, Melody would have been here, but she is preoccupied. So Melody Gibson, she's the daughter of Michael and Cindy Panner, the wife of Joe, and the mother of Hudson. And all while doing all of that, working, she graduated from, the State, Uni from State University with a Bachelor of Science in career and technical education, summa cum laude. So, congratulations, <laughs> Melody. We also have um, Ashlyn Freeman. She's the daughter of Alan and Angel Freeman, and she's the fiance of Cody Young. She graduated from Cabarrus College of Health Science. Her degree is o occupational therapist assistant. She plans on starting a biomedical science program in August after her wedding in hopes to apply to either physician assistant school and get her master's once she's finished with that. So she's got, she's got a long road ahead, so be praying for them. Congratulations, Ashlyn. And I'm sure they're watching, so. The next one is Brianna Silvers, and she's the daughter of Tip and Melinda Silvers. She's the granddaughter of Miss Bunny. She graduated from Gardner-Webb University with a Bachelor of Science in Psychology. So congratulations, Brianna. <laughs> and lastly, we have Alden Freeman. He's the son of Alan and Angel Freeman. And he graduated from Fort Jackson in South Carolina boot camp. And this week, he will graduate, that's where they are today, he will graduate from Fort Lee, Virginia as a wheeled vehicle mechanic and he will be stationed in Fort Drum in New York. 
So congratulations to Alden. So I think uh, if Kevin would say a prayer over these two girls. So you ladies, I'm going to move you right close to each other. Lord, we thank you for them. We thank you for the gift that they are to their families. We thank you the gift that they are to this church and this community. But Lord, more importantly, to this world. God, you have planted seeds in their lives. Some are coming to fruition right now, but many other things are continuing to flourish and grow. God, we thank you for placing them uh, right specifically where you need them where you will protect them, where you keep them safe, keep their hearts drawn to you. And Lord, we just thank you right now that you're going to put a hedgerow protection around them, that you will provide for them the finances for schooling and the education and the minds to be able to, to uh, uh, hold on to whatever you would have them to hold on to. And Lord, I just thank you right now that you are going to use them in a mighty way for the kingdom of God. And I thank you, Lord, that you will let their lights shine. And God, that nothing will put that out. And we thank you for that. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. you. Love you, ladies. So as I hear what the graduates are studying, of course, veterinarian, and I heard with uh, Brianna that it's... uh, is she psychology right? So stay away from her. Don't talk to her when she comes to church. <laughs> People like that analyze you, don't they? Don't they, Ian? Everything you say is scrutinized, and they try to dig deeper and stuff. And some of us are just really surface, okay? So, and I think that that's all right. Hey, I want to do something real quick. Miss Delane's going to help me one more time if you'll hand me the basket up here. Uh, this is a fifth Sunday. It only happens four times a year, once a quarter. And the kids, for the most part, are in here with us today. And I'm going to ask them if they will come down. They can sit on this front row right here. I'm going to take just a moment out of time for the kids. You don't have to come down. But if you want a piece of candy, you got to come down. So if you can sit on this front row right here. And I'm going to stay right here up close. See these fine men and women. we got some guests in here. Some that live really out of town. And uh, come stand with grandmas and grandpas and uh, different ones and your parents and some of your Brothers and sisters are in the back, and yours is probably crying over there right now, right? Okay, not yet. It be, won't be long. Well, listen, you know what today, what we're kind of celebrating today, what, what is today? Other than Sunday, what's today? Memorial. Memorial Day, okay. Do you know anybody in the service that, that's in the military right now? You don't know anybody? Okay. Do you think an aunt and uncle may be in the military? Do you think your aunt and uncle is in the military? Are they in the Air Force or anything? Okay, yeah, they, they get to fly planes, right? Kind of like the Top Gun kind of stuff, right? How many of you know anybody uh, in your families that have served in the military, been in the Army, Navy, Air Force, and the Marines? You have? Anybody else? Grandmas and grandpas, different ones I have? Do you know that there's something that really, really special about our lives and that we get to invest it into other people's lives? And as young boys and young girls... You will have an opportunity, really by law, you have to sign up uh, before you graduate from high school, and, uh, and it's that you will be faithful to this country, and we need, we need people to be really, really confident in that they're going to support our country the best that you can do, and there's a lot of ways of being able to do that, being a good student, being a good child, uh, being a good neighbor, being a good citizen, and uh, obeying the laws that are there. Do you know that laws are there for a reason, right? And it's to keep us safe. Well, today we're honoring a lot of people, men and women, that for many, many years have uh, laid their lives down. You know what laying your life down means? What does it mean? Do you know what laying your life? It don't mean like laying down for a nap, right? None of that. Yeah. How many of you want to take a nap? You can do that when I start preaching. You better put your hand down, both of y'all. Yeah, hecklers, you got to watch them. So I can tell you right now, laying down your life for someone else means that you put yourself in the place of somebody else and that you're willing to, to protect other people. Yes, sir. Going up to heaven. Oh, going up to heaven is really important. How many of you want to go to heaven? 
How many of you want to go to heaven? How many of y'all want to go to heaven? Out of all the decisions you ever make in your whole life, accepting Jesus to go to heaven is the best one you'll ever make. And it don't matter what, what goes on in this world, um, we have a, a future and a hope, and it's in you. Do you know that you're the hope? One day I'm going to get too old. I'm not going to be able to do this. And your moms and dads and your grandparents aren't either. And it's going to be left in your hands. Parents, grandparents, you know that, right? It's in their hands. So we need to do the very best. When Miss Bunny teaches you on Sundays and Miss Delane on Sundays and Wednesdays, really pay attention and keep it real close to your heart what they share with you. And remember, laying your life down for somebody or something worth the cause is the best example that we can be. Christ did that for us. Do you know that Jesus died for us? He did. Amen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an opportunity. You can pick any piece of candy in there. And you can take it back to your seat, and I'm gonna get with the I'm gonna get with the adults. So, right there, and you just share it, and then you can go back over to the other side. All right, thank you for letting your sons, daughters, grandkids come down and be a part of this. I had a uh, a question asked um, by a a guest today, and uh, they they was wondering if we had chicken today. Uh, for lunch, and and unfortunately, I did not buy any chicken, so if anyone wants to go out and get chicken before it's over with, they thought that's what we were offering today. We will we will provide you plenty of food at the end of service if we have any, but, uh, but I want to thank you for coming today. If you're a first-time guest with us, in the back of your update is a place that you can um, fill out the guest card, hand it to me, put it in one of the offering plates, want to make sure that you uh, get that and uh, have that uh, available for me so I can make sure that we uh, send you a card this week. Hey, I want to share with you a couple things, a couple announcements, and we're going to jump right into the Word today. One is that kids can register for VBS today. Out in the foyer, if you go out there, there's a sign-up sheet for that, and they'll make sure that they get that information for you. Delane, am I missing something? Okay. Usually when she stands at the back, that means she either needs something or whatever. Okay, and then the Young adults are going to be going to Carowinds on June the 12th. You can sign up in the foyer for that as well. And many of you see the blue sheet of paper that's in the back right here, and I mentioned this uh, about a week ago, is that uh, this is a great opportunity, but in conjunction with ministerial group here in uh, Belmont, and especially North Belmont, and some in Mount Holly, is that we are partnering with Habitat for Humanity, there is a neighborhood that was donated, the land was donated, and they're trying to build homes to help. Uh, it would be one neighborhood of Habitat homes. And what they're asking, and the goal is, is that we would try to uh, raise the funds to help out kind of the startup cost. The people that are moving into Habitat homes, they have to work, they have to invest, they have to spend so much time and labor, sweat equity in that home. But we want to partner with people. We want people to be off the streets, and um, not so much that, but just to have a place, a safe place that they can go and raise their families. But uh, if you would pray and consider this, you can read this, but all we're asking, if you will pray and consider it, is $10, at least $10 per person that would go towards that. And if we had, uh, I think it's on there, if we had 1,500 people or 15,000 people to do that, that would be $150,000 that would go to, to do the startups there. So you see the information there. I'll bring up a little bit more about that for you. You can look over. We have the men's ministries going on June 21st. We're going to the baseball game here in Gastonia. Junior high has a, uh, an outing on May the 29th, which is today. Uh, so junior hires, don't forget about that, 3 to 5, and it's going to be in East Belmont. You can see Gus or Rachel about that. And then next weekend is the youth lock-in. Uh, you can see that information as well. And uh, I believe most of the other information, you see camp dates uh, for youth and children. We want them to be able to participate. Don't let money or anything. You make the time, and we'll make sure that you get there, and you'll be safe, and you'll have a great camp experience this year. And uh, so we're thankful for that. How many of you doing okay? How many of you are still breathing? Anybody not breathing? All right, nobody. Raise your hands. Praise the Lord. Because we got nurses, we got plenty of nurses. We don't have very many doctors. We got a lot of nurses that think they're doctors, but we got nurses, okay? And they can help you out. Actually, many of the nurses do a lot of the doctors kind of work, so uh, we're thankful of that. 
So today we're going to, uh, I'm going to share with you, I uh, haven't been in any reason to rhyme just what the Lord's put on my heart uh, the last couple weeks since we uh, moved off of our um, uh, schedule, I guess, and, uh, but today is be a fountain, not a drain. And um, I have, um, I've thought about some of the places I've been uh, around the United States and around the world at different places, been to some some famous, not real, real famous, but some uh, famous fountains in the world and um, seen, you know, where people take the coins and they toss it in there and the water's going up and like Norman and Janie have a fountain. How many of you have a fountain at home, like a little waterfall fountain at home? Anybody have those? Yeah? Okay. It's peaceful, isn't it? You hear that water run and, and all that kind of stuff. And if you really get pretty serious, you have the koi fish and, you know, start putting fish in there to clean it up and, and to do that. Well, I, I was doing a little research, and because there's so many famous uh, fountains in the world, since we're talking about fountains and drains, um, but I, I wrote here a fun fact: the fountains of Bellagio in Las Vegas. I don't know how many of you have been in Las Vegas. Now I haven't been. I'm just raising my hand. Raise your hand. Okay. So this fountain it costs forty million dollars to build. Forty million, and that's been years ago. I have no idea what it would cost right now. Uh, if we did an up, up charge on that. It takes up an eight-acre lake to do the fountain. It com, uh, compo- composes of a network of 1,200 nozzles, 8,000 meters of pipe, however many feet that is. I don't, I don't know the, the measurements on that. There is 4,500 lights. The fountain can shoot water to a height of 24 stories. 24 stories, it shoots water. And do you know that it takes 30 engineers every single day, 365 days a year, and every one of them are scuba divers, and they're certified. So an engineer, and they need to go be underwater engineers to work on this. And it takes to, uh, the maximum amount of water in the air at any time is 20,416 gallons of water going up in the air at one time. I mean, that blows my mind that you could do something like that and the spectacle that it would be. I looked up fountains, man, and there's this one bridge, I think it's in Korea or Seoul or whatever, and this fountain comes off the side of this big old bridge that the cars go across, and it shoots out these fountains off the side Man, I mean, that would be a car wreck, right? Especially the first time you've ever seen it at night, and they're all colors, and you just kind of go into them, you know. You're, you go which way your head goes, I'm telling you. Ride a bicycle on the road and see if it don't work, right? You look to the left, and you, you know, kind of going off somewhere else. So, but anyhow, so I started thinking about fountains and, and how much uh, pleasure and how much joy we find in those. But then you start thinking about drains, they're a drag. How many of you have been around someone, they drain you? Be honest with me. I mean, every ounce of your energy, they drain you. All right? So I've never been around somebody like that, so I want you to write a little essay and tell me what those people are really like. Okay? Now, I'm just picking. We've all been around it. I'll give you a little illustration. About two years ago... Um, I never, and I've been here for almost 23 years now. I come in 99, and this summer I think it'll be 23 years. But we fill up the water baptistry. How many of you have ever been water baptized in that baptistry? Okay, in this one, all right? So a lot of you have. So when we fill that water up, I have no idea how many gallons is in it, but we fill it up, and it's there for a purpose. It's to baptize you so that it shows when you come up that you're a changed person, a new creation in Christ. Well, when we leave... I usually hit the drain button and move the little tab over the drain hole, and you'll hear it. It starts circulating and and gurgling and going down. Well, honest to goodness, I've never even thought about where the water goes. Seriously, never thought about where it went at that time. Well, I hit the button, and just so happens that somebody walked down the street here, and there's a manhole and there's a, a, a gutter system right down below here. And when they went by, they heard water running in the drain. And it caused some attention, so they called the city. The city comes out and notices that this is prehistoric, really. This is 1984 when that drain was run into that 
manhole out there that the city put a, and this is not against the city by any means, it's just an ordinance. You can't run water in there. I'm like, it's from the baptistry. It happens once a year. You can't do it. It's clean water. We've been baptizing people. You can't get no holier than water. You would probably want this to go to the sanitation section, right? This is going to clean half of your stuff up. They didn't buy it. They said, you're going to plug it. I'm like, what? Plug it. I'm like, oh, man. Do you know how hard it is to get your hand in between there and put a pipe dope and, and stick the end over there? And we stop the water. If you fill that up and you hit the drain, guess what? It don't go out that way anymore. We had to redirect things. And that's okay. But see, drains can be a drag to us. And I want you to think about life, of how life can become very heavy. How certain situations and circumstances can weigh you, weigh you down really, really quickly. If you don't have an outlet to be able to let that kind of fountain off and, and kind of uh, have an access point to be able to get away. I often like to think of the most of most people I know as fountains. They're always alive. They're always thoughtful. They're always thankful. They're blessed and they're thriving. If you think about people as fountains, but on the other hand, I'm aware of those who are a drain. No matter what you put in, it just goes right through as if you never invested anything. Can I tell you that that's not what God wants for your life? He doesn't want it. If you've got good stuff coming in, He wants you to retain it, but He wants you to share it, not just to, to waste away. I want to pause for a second. I don't know if she's watching today, and I, I failed to mention that Ruth Chandler's birthday is today. Ruth, if you're watching online, uh, her family was coming in, and they were having a celebration today. Many of you know Miss Ruth been uh, visiting with us for the last couple months, but happy birthday, Ruth. And uh, if anybody else has had birthdays or anniversaries, I just thought of that, and I better take care of it. I mentioned to you on Wednesday night, uh, the group that we had Wednesday night, and we kind of start, we are starting a, a prayer uh, focus uh, on Wednesday nights, and we encourage you to be able to come in two weeks. We'll be doing that. Uh, but I want to let you know that uh, on Wednesday night, I shared with you that um, that last Sunday, I shared very briefly, I didn't go into any details, didn't share who it pertained to, I just said, look, I know of a need, a specific need of someone in our church family, and if the Lord puts it on your heart, I'm not going to give you any amount, anything, if God's put it on your heart, would you please consider investing in that? And I'm serious. Now, I can tell you right now that the after the fact that the amount was over $3,000. Now, we're not a rich church. Now, we're a blessed church, and we've got God has blessed us. He really has with good people, with great hearts, and they're willing to invest. And when you share that and you don't give an amount, you don't know. Somebody like, here, here's a dollar, and here's $5, here's $10. But I'm telling you, last Sunday, as you left this place, you were a fountain. And I mean that to the greatest extent, that as you came by, you kept handing me, handing me, handing me. And I, all I could do is just keep putting it in that one pocket, putting it in that one pocket. So when I finally got done, I gave it to Delane at the very end of service, and she did the counting. And come to find out, by 3 o'clock on Sunday, by 3 o'clock on Sunday, every bit of the money for that need had been met. Now, that, yeah, praise the Lord. God blessed that, and I believe that he will continue to bless that, bless you as the giver, as the fountain. Many of you know Jeremy and, and Nikki Mays, and I've shared this story before, and, and Jeremy, is a, uh, he's been blind pretty much since birth and comes in and he, he speaks here, and he'll be in towards the end of the year, him and his wife, and uh, one thing that Jeremy has done out of any evangelist that's ever come here, and I've never had that experience before, uh, out of any evangelist that we've had, is that the very first time and every time since then when he comes and we take up a special offering for him, and y'all have always been gracious and very blessing to him above and beyond your tithes. And this service is not about tithes and offerings, but I'll tell you how God blesses it, that as we were able to take and pull that resource together outside 
the first thing and the last thing that it is said, hey, pastor, would you and Delane come? Let's lay hands on this, and I want to pray for you in the church. And it's one of the most beautiful prayers for you as you have invested. Can I tell you that God is looking for you and me to be fountains? When you have a fountain and it's working well, there's life in it, right? You know, there's growth, there's oxygen, there's all these kinds of things. You can look at it um, as a biologist, and I'm not. But I can tell you right now, but as, as God has looked at our lives and he's seen how he wants to bless us and how you've already been blessed and how you can bless other people, not to take it to yourself and keep it to yourself. Now, I have confessed with you that I have a weakness. And some say it's mental, some say it's a physical weakness, and it has to do with cereal. Seriously. And many of you know that a few months ago I shared about this shortage of cereal in the United States. At least going to Walmart is hurting me. I mean, it's like really digging in. It troubles me more than the gas prices. And do you know that I failed again? I went by Walmart probably three weeks ago. The one cereal that I'd been looking for for almost two months, they kept having peanut butter cereal. I'm like... I love peanut butter. I don't want it in my cereal, right? Okay, that, the same three boxes had been there for months. I'm like, you need to throw it out. It's got to be expired by now. You turn Autumn loose on it. She throws everything that's expired away from the refrigerator. And I went by, Ian, I promise you, there's three boxes of the toasted berry crunch on that shelf. And when I rounded that corner, it's almost like I heard angels singing. Ah! I'm like... Oh, my gosh. There's some cereal. I got kind of weak need, and I went over. Zach, the best thing I could have done was just got one box. I know that there has to be more than me that's looking for the cereal. You know what I done? I covered them up with stuff. Like if people seen me going down the aisle and said, hey, I've been looking for them. I'm sorry. There was only just a box. No, I wouldn't have lied. I would have gave, I'd have bought them a box. I bought all three. Now see, to me, that's kind of a drain. That's the reason that this situation is what it is. How many of you went through the toilet paper whew, rigmarole through COVID? How many of you bought more than like 36 rolls when this thing hit to begin with? How many are still using toilet paper that you've had from two years ago? <laughs> and paper towels and wipes and everything else. Is it important? Yeah. It's not going to go bad. There's no uh, expiration on it. But I can tell you right now, we're going to look at God's Word, and that's where the truth really, really is that I want to share with you today about being a fountain or a drain or a blessing or a curse. See, I believe in every single one of us, you have the ability to be a blessing to others, a blessing to yourself, blessing to God, or you can be a curse to either three. And I believe that God does care if you're a blessing or you're a curse. Turn over with me to John, the Gospel of John, chapter 12. And as you turn there, I'm sure it'll be behind us. This is about the anointing in Bethany. Um, Jesus is in a peculiar situation in that uh, his time is coming near. Uh, people are spending as much time as they can. They're not really hoarding a whole lot. Uh, resources are, I'm sure, tight, as many of us may feel that right now in uh, our state, in the United States. But let me read this because I think that um, if you think of Judas... He could have been a, a fountain, couldn't he? He could have been a blessing, but he had problems. And he did not deal with the problems, and his problems would lead him down different roads. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead, there they made him a supper. And Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of oil. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, 
who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? And he said, Not this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box. And he used to take, and he used to take what was put in it. And Jesus said, Let her alone. She has kept this day for the day of my burial. For the poor you will have with you always, but me you do not have always. So I think about Judas and the thoughts that probably would have went through his mind. And we can justify a lot of things. I think that I can, maybe you can as well, to make it seem all right. We know that what they were doing for Jesus was the right thing to do. And we know that, you know, Jesus was not opposed to giving to Caesar, render under Caesar's what Caesar's, and he did the best that he could with the, the situations that he was in. But I can tell you right now that, as it said here, Judas was a drain. He wasn't a fountain. We don't know much about his beginning of this. We just kind of catch up with him and the disciples a little bit later on. And it makes you wonder, as I read some commentary, why didn't he let Matthew be in charge of the books and the money? He would have really took care of it because he's used to taking care of the money. But for reasons we may never know, Judas was in charge of that. You see, fountains and drains can really translate to blessings and curses. And, and again, it's up to us to see where we stand in this. I hope for all of our sakes that... We want to live blessed lives. How many of you want to live a blessed life and you don't want to be cursed the rest of your life? All right? So I think all of you raise your hands. And there's certain things that we're going to look at that can almost, without a shadow of a doubt, according to God's word, prove to you that you can be a blessing in this life. You see, there's times in my life that, that I really felt that I was a curse to a lot of things, a lot of people, that whatever I became a part of failed, and whatever I joined with was not usually good. And it's hard to change your mindset from thinking that, well, that's about all you can ever be. But when Christ comes in and he changes the foundation of your life and he starts to move things around and get rid of things that you don't need anymore, just that excess weight that... He starts to reside in your heart and your life, and he starts to transform your mind, your spirit, everything that's about you. If I could say anything to the graduates on the subject as an encouragement, for those of you, and you're around there, live your life to the fullest in God and try to outgive him, and you will always be blessed. I have found that if you try to outgive God, you will be one of the most blessed people in this world. Amen. Now, you may be, you know, I'm retired. I don't, I barely have any money. It's not about money. It's about the heart condition of what you give it from. It really, really is. There's a section in Romans chapter 12, if you would follow along with me over in Romans chapter 12. Verses 9 through 21. How many of you, your sinuses have not been good to you? Yeah, me too. I am wrong on that. Hang on one second. I gave you the wrong scripture. Oh, I'm going to be lost without that. Lord, you're going to have to help me with that. I know it's not in there. Shoot. I'm going to have to redirect. Don't go to Romans. But you probably need to read Romans. And that, that may be the Lord talking about being more than conquerors. Throughout Scripture, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, uh, starting in Genesis chapter 3, you have the part where Adam and Eve are before God. And God does something. He knows that humanity, mankind... People, men and women that were created in his image, have failed. And he's having to make this decision. How many of you, your kids have ever failed you or failed something and you, you found that they've failed? They've fallen short of something, right? 
All of us have. We've all fallen short, right? So, therefore, the kids probably are going to do it too. And if you have any grandkids, they're going to do it as well. Something that God says in Genesis chapter 3, he tells them, the land that you're going to live in is not going to be perfect anymore. Actually, instead of being blessed, it's going to be cursed. The easiness of life of you walking down the road and just picking fruit and hanging out and sunbathing and doing whatever you wanted to do, enjoying life and growing your family, you're fixing to work the field. And ma'am, when you have a baby, it's really, really going to hurt. Not a little bit, it's going to hurt a lot. So is the days until I return. You are going to live in a cursed world because of the decisions you made. But the great thing is this, that God even seeing that in Genesis and moving all the way to the New Testament and you get to the Gospels, that Jesus comes and as we just celebrated through Easter, that he would come and that he would die for us that now we don't have to live as cursed, we can live blessed lives again. That even though the law still pertain to us, there is grace and mercy that we move into and that we can extend grace and mercy to the people that we come in contact with. And how many of you know people need grace and mercy in their lives? People need forgiveness in their lives. They need for you to say, would you forgive me? It's hard sometimes for us to do that. And I don't understand why it's hard to do, but sometimes it becomes a challenge for us to be able to do those kinds of things. The greatest news for all Christians is that when Adam and Eve, they did mess up, God had a plan to take us from cursed to blessed and I know that without a shadow of the doubt that I live and I work and I minister around people that live blessed lives. I can't honestly say anybody that I know in here or even watching on here live a cursed life. Because you've understood, you've, you've gained the knowledge that, man, if I'm with Christ, nothing can come against you, right? Right? Nothing's going to win against you. With Christ and, and God on our side, we are winners. We are victorious in Christ Jesus. And that is a blessing from heaven itself. So, how do we deal with the drains? How do we, how do we change people? Now, we have some psychologists in here, and I know that they have been trained and taught and would be very good at that, but just as a yes and no, and I'll go to Amber since she's the closest there, Amber, can you personally change somebody? You can't. All that education and all that schooling, you can't change <laughs> Do you know that that's a reality? You can't change nobody but you. If you have a mindset that you are cursed and everything's coming against you and, this is, and that's all the naysaying you do every single day of your life, guess what you're going to do? You're going to be defeated. Does anybody in here really like to be defeated? I don't. We're more than conquerors in Christ Jesus, he says. Does it mean that you're better than anybody else? Absolutely not. It means that we're all on this journey together. Some are going a little faster. Some are going a little slower. Some are in a big boat. Some's in a small. And I mean, you know, like a canoe or a paddleboard or whatever. But, you know, as long as you're going forward and you're moving forward, guess what? That's where God would have you to be right now. It's just the problem of when we sit still or start going backwards that becomes the problem. You all have treasures in your life. And those treasures in this life may be your experiences. How many of you know you can use your experiences to change people's lives? 
When we have people to come down and we say, look, you know, sister so-and-so, she's, she's going through chemo or whatever or found out a bad report from the, from the doctors and, and we want people to come around them that have, have dealt with the same thing or back issues or whatever. Your experiences can be a blessing to other people. I've watched as people have shared um, different, you know, things with each other uh, from medically or to experiences or where to go to receive the right help. Some of us, our treasures in life may be your resources. Maybe you have resources to do. Now, I love, we haven't done it in two years, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but the teenagers. Which we, I have a pontoon, and I know Alan has a pontoon, and there's others that have boats and stuff. And when we have the teenagers to go to dinner on the lake, and I mean, which Alan's got a really nice pontoon, or, or it's nicer, but to stick those men and women on the boat that normally don't go out on the boat a lot, some of them. To be able to go down and go have a meal together and just enjoy fellowship with one another, that's a resource. It could sit over here all day long, every day for the whole year and never be used, and it's not really a resource. It needs to go to the scrapyard because that's a lot of aluminum. You know what aluminum's getting at the scrapyard right now? Woo! Don't be taking that boat to the scrapyard. But anyhow, so, so sometimes your treasure is your faithfulness. Can I commend you, if you're faithful to your spouse, you're confa- you are faithful to your kids, you're faithful to the church, and more importantly, you're faithful to God, that is a blessing. Amen. Too often people just say, you know, it's getting too hard, it's getting too tough, I'm giving up. God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. He's given you the determination to finish strong. Paul tells us, man, I've got this race in front of me. I'm struggling with whether I need to stay here or go to heaven. And I'd rather be in heaven, but I think that God has me here right now for you. And I could say that, and I think many of you could. Man, I really want to go to heaven. But for whatever reason, he's got me here right now, and I'm going to make the most of it. I'm going to be faithful to God. Why not share your treasures while you're on the earth is what my question is to you today. Why not be a fountain while you're on this earth? Many of you are. And I think all of us are in a certain sense. But I think we can step it up. And I think that we can do even more. And that may be, I'm, I had a meeting this week and, and Jennifer Grant was actually at this meeting and, uh, and it was really working with ministries all throughout the county to help uh, not only homelessness, but other things that, that you know, definitely is a, is a priority in our community that needs to be addressed, social and mental health issues and all these kinds. And we got together, and I heard all these people working and talking, and, and it was really good. It was powerful. And if we do what everybody is saying we can do, we can change things. We're not going to change the people, but we can change the situation that maybe they can receive Christ. Maybe they can find their hope in that. Now, I wrote down another scripture, and I hope it's right, and I'm going to kick myself if it ain't. We're going to go to Luke chapter 12. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. I, I usually try that out. And... But it's talking about the rich man. See, I know a, a number of you in here are really rich. I mean, like Linda Williams has got a lot. You rich, ain't you, Linda? Are you? Yeah. You got a lot of money. You got faith in God. All right. I've told you this before, and I really, really mean this. I've met some really, really, when, when you're looking at the standards across the board, some really, really poor people in this world. Maybe not in the United States, but in this world. But they were the richest people I've ever been around in my life. And they didn't have a house. If they had enough pallets that you could break down to build a shelter. And what amazed me, this was in Jamaica, 
what amazed me is that when, when you got around them and you went over and seen their little hut, I mean, it was really a hut, seriously, out in the middle of nothing, and every once in a while a cow would come by or a goat or whatever, and it wasn't theirs. They didn't bother it. They ate fruit, a lot of fruit. And you'd get over there and you'd, you'd spend a little bit of time with them. We don't get off the beaten path that much anymore on the missions trips, but we need to. But to get over there, and they were so proud that God had provided off of one of the storage containers the pallets that they could take and break down and make a house. And it wasn't no bigger than probably this space right here. That was it. Wasn't no bed, no lazy boy recliner, no Yeti cup. For some reason, they didn't have no Yeti cup. They don't even have ice. Boy, that's where you draw the line when you don't have no ice. And no air conditioning. But to go over there and to spend time with this gentleman and to hear him tell me how faithful God had been in his life. You're talking about make you cry. I'm thinking about, man, I, I give away to goodwill or to other people more in six months probably he'll have in ten years. What's the difference in him and me? His perspective. You see, he sees himself as a blessed man that God's called him. He didn't mind handing out tracts and telling people about Jesus. And I guess he'd probably invite you back to his house for a, some guava juice or something, but I don't know. He didn't have a whole lot to offer, but what he did have to offer, he would give. Luke chapter 12, verses 13. It says, Then one from the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or an arbor, arbor Arborator, <laughs> over you, arbiter, over you. And he said to them, Take heed and be aware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and, and build greater. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Jesus goes on, he says, verse 20. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will these things be? which you have provided. So he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. We know that we're not guaranteed the rest of this day, literally. I do enough funerals each year to know that there are times when people don't know when their last day is. I hope you have many, many more days, many years, and many fruitful Fountain full days that you pour into people's lives. And may I say that's my prayer for you and for me. That as we move forward that we always have a heart to be a fountain and not a drain. That we're just letting it waste away and we're not utilizing it. We're not using it. Norman said, said something a few minutes ago before we started worship. And he said... Uh, I said, boy, that's a lot of guys up here. He said, yeah, we're missing some today, and, and they are. They're off on vacation and stuff. And he said, and Norman, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I said, man, this is good. You're going to do good. And he said, yeah, but if I mess up, they'll know it's me this time. And I said, well, you don't have to worry about a thing, brother. You just be blessed and be fruitful. You give what you got. It's up to God to do the rest. You know what? We're going to fail. We're going to fall a little short. But I'd much rather fail and fall a little short for God than not to do nothing. Amen. And you can change that grammar all you want to, not to do nothing. God loves you. And he's blessed each and every one of us with this day. What are you going to do with it? How are you going to be a blessing to somebody else? 
If God's blessed you, bless somebody else. You may need to smile at somebody. I'm, I'm going to give my last Walmart story and we're going to stop. So I went to Walmart this morning and I picked up because it's fifth Sunday and I, for, I really forgot until this morning that it was bagels day. So I went and got the stuff and I come back out. And there's this lady and she was just as happy. I heard her inside, but as she was walking out, she was happy as a lark. She was an employee. She said, I got four more days here. I said, really? I said, you just getting off work? She said, yep. I said, uh, you going on vacation? She said, I'm going to North Myrtle Beach. I said, oh, that's good. I said, on vacation? She said, nope. I'm tired of this town. I'm heading out of here. I'm moving. I got four more days to work, and I'm going to be out of this city. Now, I said that because I said, well, hey, enjoy where you go. I talked about it last week. Be fruitful where God plants you. The grass, a lot of times, look really good on the other side, don't it? But when you get over there, hmm, it ain't so good. <laughs> Not as good as you thought it would be. Can I tell you that God has planted you, God has blessed you for a day and a time such as this. Graduates, good luck on everything that you do. I pray that God would just open up doors that only He could open. He would close the ones that that don't need to be open for you. And for the rest of us that's going to be around here, supporting and praying for them, doing what we do, do it to the best of your ability. And when that's not good enough, lean more on God. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for these men and these women, these youth and these children. I thank you that they've been patient with me today. But Lord, more importantly, you've been patient with us. God, you know that in our hearts, you've placed this desire not only to know you, but to share you with other people, to be a blessing to others that are around us. That it doesn't always have to be about us. Rarely should it be about us. It should be about you and what you've placed us on this earth to do, and that's to be a witness, to be a blessing, to be a fountain. God, we know that there are people in this world that are drains. They're Judases, or they're, their eyes are not on the prize which is in heaven. It may be earthly. It may be momentarily. But God, I pray that as we encounter them, that we're able to share with them that no matter what we get on this earth, just as the rich young fool, you can only store up so much. You can only plan for so long. Finally, there's an end to this world, and then it's into the eternal. God, I pray that we're investing in eternal things more than we are in earthly things. I pray, God, that you would give us opportunities to show people how good and how great you've been in our lives without bragging on us, but bragging on you. And, God, that people will know who you are and that they'll want the same thing that we have for ourselves. Lord, I thank you for the families, for these men and women that have given their lives this Memorial Day. And Lord, I pray that we honor our service people, our people in our community that work in different areas that lay their lives down each and every day. I pray your blessings upon our time and our travels. And it's in Christ's name we pray. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Have a great day. Don't forget about the sign-ups. <laughs>